Hey y'all, today it's Lexi versus Dorinthia, and let's get into it. So why I wanted to try this deck is that, well firstly there was that Lightning Lexi list that won a ProQuest, and also I saw a similar list at one of the ProQuests that I attended, where someone's running this Lightning Lexi list with Art of Wars and Three of a Kind, and the potential explosive nature of that made me really want to try this deck out. So here we are. Um, I won the die roll and I chose to go first, naturally. As Ranger, you really want to take advantage of your new horizon. Ideally, what you do on turn one is you load an arrow with Voltaire, and then using your other arsenal slot, you arsenal um, an elemental card. So the turn after, you can come in with a six card hand. Unfortunately, the way we drew, we drew four arrows. So that's definitely not great. Um, you could load two arrows in, but that's really bad because the next turn, you won't be able to give either one of those arrows go again with Voltaire because they're already in your arsenal. So I decide I'm just gonna use Voltaire just to pitch some cards, just get some of these cards out of my hand, not actually load anything, and then just arsenal at the end of my turn like a normal person. So okay, there we go. We activate Voltaire. It's a May ability, so we don't actually use it, but we do can just spend the resources into it. Then we pass. Definitely not the sort of turn one we want to have, but that's the way it is with Ranger sometimes, right? For non non attack hand or like a four attack hand, it's kind of unfortunate. Okay, and then they start with uh, or his Valor, and then come in with the Axe. It's five, and if it hits, go again. Uh, we have two cards in a hand that don't block. Um, and the only two cards that do block are attacks, so obviously I can't block this out. It's another problem in Ranger sometimes, it's really hard to block. But hopefully this Lightning Lexi list can come back with more damage. So yeah, then the second hatchet comes in for three. Oh, on our turn, we activate Lexi. That's just so we get the extra uh, extra arsenal slot from New Horizon. And now we can go ahead and load with Voltaire, giving a light it up go again. All right, so we fire the light it up and we fuse it with a lightning press, which makes it really awkward for our opponent. You know, if they overblock it, then I just don't use the lightning press. If they don't overblock it, then you know they will use the lightning press. So putting our opponent, uh, opponent in a bit of a bind there. Cool. And then they choose to overblock it. So of course we could still have this lighted up hit if we lightning press and out of war, but I don't think that's a very efficient use of out of war. So I choose not to go for that route. And then our other option right now is to fire off this Bolton shot. But since on the next turn I am planning to use this Out of War, uh, I might as well just save the Bolton shot for the next turn. Because the Out of War plus one buff means that this Bolton shot will have go again, even though it already started in my arsenal. Yep, so we just go ahead and pass there. And then my opponent starts with Spoils of War. Uh, very standard during their turns. One card to pitch, one card to give the first hatchet go again somehow, either Blade Runner or in this case, like Spoils of War. Previous turn, War is Valor. And now they're coming with the other hammer. And on our side, we have drawn three of a kind, so definitely very glad that we kept the Out of War from the previous turn, because now we have that Out of War three of a kind turn. Also, this is a tunic turn as well, so really nice stuff. It's important to note that you have to out of war first, because if you three of a kind first, you won't be able to play the out of war from your hand. Okay, 
tip, so we choose a plus one and the banish to draw two. And we find a blue. Since this turn we're going to be three of a kinding, uh, I want to pitch the blue. Gives the most resources. But of course it is our only fuse card right now, so I'm hoping I draw another one if I draw an elemental arrow. Uh, unfortunately, I don't draw another one. But we we do draw another bolt and shot and an endless arrow, so I'm still okay without fusing this turn. This turn's still going to be really explosive. So yep, this bolt and shot comes in for five. It's buffed by the Art of War. This was already in an arsenal. And let's go again and the, uh, the on hit reload. And the thing about these Art of War three of a kind turns is that you're usually limited by how many times you can load arrows because you can only activate Volt Arrow twice. So that is really the limiting factor here. So trying to take advantage of the bolt and shot reload is actually very significant. So I put on blocks five. Uh, they know I have the lightning press, but there's only so so much you can play on lightning press. Like on the previous turn, they already overblocked, and I didn't use it. So, yep. So then now we load our other bolt and shot. This is off of the reload of the first bolt and shot, so we still haven't used bolt here yet. And it's coming for five, and with the same effect. Cool. So my opponent takes the five from bolt and shot, and we get to reload again. It's important to note that we did not use Lexi's ability this turn. Even though we could have at the beginning of the turn, we had Lightning Press that was face down, we could have used. But flipping it up then wouldn't have done anything because our follow up attack, the Bolt and Shot, already had go again. So it's good that we conserved that use because we actually had to use it here uh, to flip over this Fatigue Shot that we reloaded in so that we get the extra Arsenal zone. And that means I can load this Endless Arrow in with Voltaire and give it go again. And then I put on full blocks Endless Arrow, as we expected, because Endless Arrow is a, quite a threatening on hit. And then we go ahead and do the Fatigue Shot that's also coming in for 5. Well, my opponent blocks 3 and they take 2. Yep, so out of all 3 of a kind turn, obviously very strong. We took our opponent's entire hand and still leaked in 10 damage. They did start this turn at 40, so that's nice. Cool. So we started turn with Lexi. Unfortunately, it's not an elemental card, but... Yep. We pitched the only elemental card we saw the previous turn. And we tunic in the middle of the turn because we're bad at the game. So we load Voltaire uh, and we, we load the Fatigue Shot, giving it go again. And you might think, oh, Fatigue Shot into Warrior, uh, how useful is that? Well, the thing is, your opponent knows they're against Ranger, right? So most of the time they would like to side in their CNCs and stuff like that, because CNCs are absolutely crippling against Ranger. So having Fatigue Shot is just, just a very useful tool if you're a Ranger. And here we see, I guess, the other use case. My opponent blocks with Nourishing Emptiness. It totally makes sense, because if the Fatigue Shot hits, the Nourishing Emptiness only comes in for 3 Dominate, which isn't very scary. So then they, you know, they kind of have to block with it. Okay, but then they still elect to full block this Fatigue Shot, which tells me they probably have another attack. It means they don't plan to just, you know, swing with Axes next turn. And then we come in with the Lighted Up. And it is fused, so it's coming in for 4, but it threatens 8 damage. Because my opponent has 4 pieces of equipment. And the other effect of the on hit means that they won't be able to activate Tunic next turn, and they won't be able to activate play Brave Forge Braces next turn. So two very relevant on hits this turn, which is nice. The Fatigue Shot light it up. Then my opponent decides to just take all eight of it so that's a little scary let's see what they follow up with we get to arsenal lightning surge this time it's really nice arsenal lightning surge because you can flip it up to give your next arrow go again which means when you use uh, when you load an arrow at voltaire you can give it plus one with voltaire and it has go again from flipping up lightning surge and you can follow up with the lightning surge from arsenal which has go again and then another arrow 
Of course, we draw two blue arrows. Uh, so, you know, that line of play doesn't look very good right now. Um, and my opponent starts the turn with a cash in. Okay, then my opponent does a spill blood. So, they... Yep, give the axes plus two and dominate. And uh, looking at this hand, um, I can't do much with two blue arrows and two rain raises. So I decide it's probably best for me to just block out a little this turn and hope I draw into a better hand next turn where I can take advantage of the two rain raises. So this hatch is coming in for eight with dominate. Um, my opponent couldn't brave forge braces because of the lighted up, so that's nice. So we block three and take five. Yep, and on our turn, we activate Lexi, flip over the Lightning Surge, just so we get the extra Arsenal slot from New Horizon. And then we have the option of playing this Lightning Surge, but there's kind of no point doing that because that just gives your opponent the chance to use their hand more effectively. For example, if their best play right now is just off of three cards, which is not uncommon for Warrior, um, like say a three card hand, then us, I'll throw a four card hand out of the five cards, us attacking them means they get to use their last card effectively, uh, efficiently by blocking with it. So, so I just I like to keep the Lightning Surge in Arsenal for a potential go off turn where I can use it, and it's more likely to actually deal damage. Oh. Then my opponent starts with a hit and run, and this hatch is coming for two. Looking at a hand again, I, now we only have one arrow, so definitely not looking good uh, with a double rain raises. But, but actually we don't even need to use either rain raises. Uh, I could just easily lightning surge from Arsenal, and then load in the snapshot and just play the snapshot and conserve both my rain raises for when I have more arrows. So the next one still looks like we can do something. So we go ahead and say no blocks on that hatchet. And then my opponent follows up with a command and conquer, which absolutely destroys ranges because it'll destroy both cards in Arsenal. So no matter what, the CNC takes two cards from me. Right, it's either two cards from my hand, or if I let it hit, then it's two cards in my arsenal. Yep, so I decide that the two cards in my arsenal are very worth it, the rain raises and the lightning surge, so I use the two the electrifying snapshot in my hand and the tunic to block it out. Right, so now I go ahead and play the lightning surge from my arsenal. That's just so I free up a slot. So that I can arsenal my other rain raises. So we activate Lexi to reveal the rain raises, free up the arsenal slot. We go ahead and use Voltaire just so we can opt to to try and find the hand we're looking for. Um, we see two non arrows. We just send them both to the bottom. Um, yeah. Also, we get this I have a video out of a hand because it doesn't block, and we're giving up one on a five card hand, so we you know, may want stuff that blocks. Cool. So, you know, we had like two off turns there, pretty unfortunate. Uh, drawing double rain raises sort of can lead to that sort of stuff. Not enough arrows. You also can't even you know, block with them, so yeah. But now we have a three of a kind. So three of a kind with double rain raises sounds awesome. So at this point I've decided I do not want to block at all this turn. This hatch is coming in for four with dominate. I'll go ahead and take it. And then my opponent comes in with another CNC, so now we're forced to block again. Because, yeah, double rain raises is too powerful to give up. Yep, so we give our opponent two arrows again, because Snatch and Three of a Kind only block two. So, honestly, very rude by opponent to CNC us twice in a row. Yeah. So now we have the option to pitch a Snatch Three of a Kind and hope to draw at least two arrows. But... I decide not to take that risk of like not drawing enough arrows and just come in the snatch, which actually threatens a decent amount. Like our opponent doesn't know the card in an arsenal or a card in a hand, 
but they do see that we have snapdragons up. So they're actually very incentivized to block this because if I if they don't, then I'm threatening a snapdragons on the snatch. Then I have the extra card, the unknown card in arsenal, the face up rain raises, and the unknown card in hand. So we like to do that. Uh, we draw into another three of a kind. Of course, having two three of a kinds is awkward. You, there's no way you can play both. But at least this means we can arsenal one of the three of a kinds. Uh, we can play one, arsenal the other one. Uh, since we've had like two off turns, like back to back, we really need to try and take tempo back with the three of a kind and make sure we maintain it. So being able to arsenal the other three of a kind would actually be quite nice. Uh, my opponent is playing a remembrance in their turn and they're trying to decide what to take. Okay, so they take the three spell bloods. At first they were considering the CNCs and the nourishing, but I think with me at 13, they value the dominate a lot more. Okay, and then they come in with spoils of war and a hatchet, but at least now we can rest easy knowing there isn't a third CNC coming at us. Cool, so we just take the damage here. We are gonna follow up with a three of a kind turn. Um, there's an argument of blocking with like one of our three of a kind since we can only use one next turn. But like I said earlier, um, our plan is to steal tempo back with one of our three of a kinds and the other three of a kind will serve us much better to maintain the tempo that we're gonna get rather than giving us two life right now. Okay, my opponent gets a copper and yeah. The nice thing about having the two rain raises in arsenal um, on a three of a kind turn is that we don't actually need to play them first. We can see what we draw with three of a kind first and then decide whether we want to play them. Otherwise, if the rain raises were in hand, you would need to play them first before you three of a kind. Yep, so we pitch the yellow to do the three of a kind and draw up. Uh, no elemental card again, but we do have a blue at least, so that's nice. And then now we need to make space in our arsenal. Um, and no point to frivolously use Lexi's ability, so we might as well just play the face down rain raises. Okay, and then we go ahead and Voltaire. And then we load a fatigue shot. And the idea behind loading the Fatigue Shot is that I'm hoping my opponent wastes their blocks on the Fatigue Shot so that my follow-up Endless Arrow can hit. So right now his Fatigue Shot's coming in for 7 with Go again from Voltaire. My opponent declares no blocks and I follow up with the other Rain Razor. Since I know I'm firing at least 3 arrows this turn, I might as well just use both the Rain Razors now. There's an argument for just using one of them now, so next turn I can do another Rain Raises 3 of a kind turn, but I doubt I'm getting more value than 3 arrows, so it's hard to get more value than 3 arrows off of a Rain Raises, so I just use the second one now as well. Let me use Voltaire a second time, now it's endless arrows coming in for 8, and you see what I was talking about earlier, that on turns like this you're limited by how many times you can load uh, you can load your arrows. So we did give this endless arrow go again because we have bullseye braces up. So, you know, we can use that to, to load another arrow in. Yep, and the endless arrow had go again. So then we break the chain to use bullseye braces load in this fatigue shot and use our last floating resource to fire this fatigue shot which is coming in for 10. Plus 4 from the rain raises and plus 1 from the the bullseye braces. Okay, then my opponent blocks 3 and goes down to 2. And we get to our sound 3 of a kind. Cool. And then we draw into Out of War, so we're really glad that we are still the three of a kind. Uh, so we have two options here. We could start with the Pulse, 
and then you know pitch one of our red arrows to art of war and banish the other red arrow to draw two and then after that you know play three of a kind and hope we join elemental arrow so that it'll get the benefit from pulse or we could just pitch the pulse to play art of war and banish the ridge rider shot and keep the bolt and shot in hand so i prefer that line of play because like i said earlier um, on turns like this you're really limited about how many times you can load Voltaire. So I really want the potential reload that Bolt and Shot gives us. So yeah, go ahead and pitch the Pulse. Also, if you don't draw an Elemental Arrow, which is very unlikely, but you know, if you don't, then you feel really bad that you've played the Pulse. Cool. Then we pitch the blue to three of a kind. Uh... We did draw Snapshot, but we did not draw any Lightning cards to fuse with it. So we only have two Voltaire activations this turn. And no other way to cheat out more unless the Bolt and Shot hits. So same principle as before. First arrow is the one that we want our opponent to block. And the second arrow is the one that has on hit that we're actually trying to get through. Yep, so we load the Searing Shot, which actually my opponent needs to full block. Because if it even deals M1, then it's on hit triggers and my opponent loses another one. So this one's coming in for 5 go again. Uh, yep. My opponent full blocks it. Yep, then we activate Voltaire a second time. Load in the bolt and shot. Give it plus 1. This one's now coming in for 6. Yep, and we're, my opponent full blocks this. So we're really sad we didn't find the elemental card to fuse the snapshot with. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we got out of a three of a kind, so really can't complain too much. So, yep, so our turn base ends there, because we're limited by number of times we can load our arrows. Then we go in Arsenal, but we did get our opponent's full hand, so. Full and we drop, and this time we do have the elemental card to a few snapshot with, but we only have... Uh, we only have like two playable arrows in hand, the yellow bolt and shot and yellow snapshot. Um, so we don't actually need a snapshot fuse. Like there's no way we can actually use the additional bow activation. So yeah, we fire off snapshot and we reveal the line surge, which is actually a mistake. Uh, like I said, uh, we have no way to use the additional activation. So there really is no point giving my opponent this information here. That, that have a blue lightning surge in hand. Cool. Let me fire the bolt and shot. We give it plus one, so let's go again naturally. It's coming in for four. So, yeah, um, another mistake from me is that I should have given the first snapshot plus one with Voltaire and just use Snapdragons to give it go again because we are at that point where that extra one damage could really matter. Um... And, you know, there's, there really is not much more opportunity for me to use Snapdragons after this. So, yeah. So, my opponent, you know, goes on to one. And if I'd given the plus one to the first attack, you know, I probably would have taken that last card from their hand. Whereas now they actually get to come back at me with a two-card hand. So, they're coming at me with a Spoils of War hatchet. So, this is coming in for four. And I know the second hatchet is going to come in for three after this. Uh, there's no way they can buff it because they don't have resources to attack and use Braveforge Braces. So that means I know that I need to use at least one of my arrows to block because out of one rain races don't block. So I go ahead and say no blocks on the first hatchet, go down to one, and this turns off their skull cap. Uh, their last block on the skull cap, and then I just you know, use one of my arrows to block. Uh, I'm really hoping that on this next turn that I can just blow my opponent out with the rain races. So we start by activating Lexi, uh, so our next attack gets go again, which means now when we use Voltaire to load the Searing Shot, we can give it plus one. And then fire the Searing Shot, and this is five with go again. And my opponent's actually in a very tough position here. There's only so many things they can play around. If they play around a Lightning Press or a Rain Raises by overblocking this, then like what I potentially could have actually is a zero cost arrow. So then I could actually load Voltaire again, play the zero cost arrow, and then follow up with Lightning Surge. And if they overblock the first searing shot, 
then they lose to that line. But if they exact block, like what they do here, then they lose to the lightning press or rain raises. So opponent was in a very tough spot. Um, I played the rain raises a bit too quickly. I should have let them resolve the sink first. I got a bit excited there. Uh, but yeah, they didn't have any further defense reactions. So we managed to get there. So yeah, this Lightning Lexi list, definitely very explosive at times, but of course, as his Ranger, potentially has those, you know, very awkward hands. Uh, so yeah, that was the game. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it.